Guys, I've been through an ordeal the last couple of weeks, pretty much since I've moved into this new house. I've been through numerous attacks and quite a, a very difficult time. My content has been going out at a lot slower rate than usual. So thanks for those of you who've inquired if I'm okay and what's been going on. I've been trying to keep my content on Instagram and on TikTok as constant as usual, but even that's been falling behind. So it seems now that the attacks are subsiding. It seems now that the ordeal is calming down. And for that reason, I'm sitting here ready to talk to you about the attacks that are going on specifically for people who hold a tremendous amount of light on the planet. Let's talk about it. Darkness is on the attack. Darkness is on the attack. Light workers, star seeds, beings of consciousness, many of you are finding yourself very attacked right now. And we're going to talk about why, how that attack is taking place, and what you can do to support yourself through this. This conversation is a very, very important one. I'm going to go through a lot of information. So save this because you may want to either make notes, write things down or review it later on. Send it to a friend. If you know somebody who's going through a really difficult time and they're facing a lot of attack from the external, this is going to bring them a lot of insight and a lot of comfort. Because one of the things that you feel when you're attacked is on your own. And there's a reason why. Because darkness, when it attacks, and don't you worry, we're going to talk about dark and light because there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. When darkness attacks, it always does so in a group. It does so with viciousness and it does so with reinforcements. Do you know why? Because a lie cannot stand up on its own. It always needs to prop itself up against reinforcements. So a lie or an attack or darkness will come at you in force. It will come at you in droves and you will stand and you will stand alone and you will feel betrayed and abandoned and alone and as if you are left to face the wolves all by yourself. But you are not because you have something within you that I'm going to talk about now. Light, light, dark and truth. Those are the three components to reality. Light and dark are the two components of duality, light and dark. But when light and dark come together, they create something bigger than the individual parts. What is bigger than light? What is bigger than darkness? Truth. Truth. Now, you may call that true light because that is what happens when darkness and light merge and become one, it becomes light, but it becomes light of a different frequency. It holds more substance. It is less airy fairy and it is very, very real. And you guys know me, right? When I share with you and I speak to you, where do I speak to you from? From authenticity and vulnerability and from a very, very real, raw, straightforward, honest place. That's what truth sounds like. That's how truth conducts itself. I'm not going to be the airy fairy spiritual princess ever because it is very pretty and it is very beautiful and I'm not judging it and saying it's wrong. It is light and that's what light does. That's what light looks like. And then of course you've got darkness which is sometimes very obvious and sometimes not. We're going to talk about tools of darkness later on. Stay tuned for that. Because you're going to learn something amazing about one of the big pitfalls of light. Because light starts acting like darkness in many, many instances. If you understand more about darkness, you understand how light often poses in a certain way, but is in itself holding a darkness that it cannot integrate. When that integration happens, however... We can call it true light or we can just call it truth for short, right? I'm a big fan of abbreviations. So those are the three components to creation. There's dark and there's light and there's truth. Call it wholeness. Call it truth. Call it true light. Call it whatever you want to. I'm never going to get fanatical about names. Another thing, as we talk about names, people often ask me, Kerry, you talk about star seeds and light workers and how do I know which one I am if I am? Okay, here, let me make it really simple. Because this is, we are, we simply don't have the time for division and semantics right now. We do not. Are you a light worker? Are you connected to light? Is light valuable to you? Is it important to you? What is light? Light is love. Light is beauty. Light is harmony. Light is upliftment. Light is a frequency of kindness and caring and connection. Is 
that important to you, then you are a being of light. How do you know if you're a being of darkness? Darkness manipulates. It often stays behind the scenes. That's where darkness is powerful, when it's unseen. Guys, why is darkness attacking right now? Hmm? I'm going to talk about that. It's a very, very important question. But let me cover a little bit more about darkness. So sometimes it's totally invisible. And when it's totally invisible, it's very, very powerful in its hidden place. Darkness is a lot less powerful when it is on the surface and on the attack, which is actually where it is right now. But a being of darkness will look like this. They will be very judgmental and they'll be very quick to condemn. They'll be very quick to judge. They'll be very quick to blame and they'll call reinforcements in because they cannot stand on their own. They need to and love to and want to make you wrong, 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 wrong. Do you know why? Because the more wrong you are, the more right darkness feels because darkness doesn't feel right because it isn't right right in the sense of universal justice right in the sense of righteousness that which is of the nature of truth see light is always going to do that light is always going to lean more towards the nature of truth darkness is always going to reject that and lean away from it but nonetheless, when darkness goes on the attack, it wants to puff itself up. And because darkness has no means to do that, because darkness has no power, let it sink in. Darkness has no power. But what it does is it tries to, and it does, and it can, and it's done it for time immemorial, take the power of light takes your power and it uses it for itself. That's what feeds darkness. That's what darkness lives on. It lives on making light bad and wrong so that it can feel right, so that it can feel powerful, so that it can feel as if it's a force to be reckoned with. And light has, for time immemorial, given up its power, given up its autonomy, given up its sovereignty, given up itself out of fear, intimidation, coercion, and a feeling of wrongness and a feeling of shame. Light continually employs the tricks of darkness upon itself and finds itself in a position of smallness. So now we understand a little bit more about the nature of dark, a little bit more about the nature of light. I've got many more videos that will explain this deeper. There's a video on my channel called Who is God? So the Kerry K channel, Who is God? That's a really great video. There's another video called Gods of the False Matrix that explains a little bit more about the beings of darkness and what their MO is and how they operate. So if you want more information, it's there. Let's talk a little bit more about the attack right now. Why? I asked that question earlier. Why, why is darkness doing this? Because light is taking up more and more space. Does that make light wrong? Is light now the bad guy? No. What light is doing right now is it's busy doing what it's designed to do, what its nature is. Light is a presence that just exudes. It takes up space. Darkness does the opposite. Darkness shrinks and light expands. And the architects of the false matrix kept us separate from light for so many years that we couldn't possibly count, for so many generations that we can't possibly remember anything beyond the confines of the false matrix that we've known. We've lost connection to memory of and affiliation with the organic place of creation that we come from. This is also called the organic matrix. A matrix simply means a reality field. Matrix isn't a bad thing. It's just a playground that we play in. That's what all reality is. It's a place for us to evolve. The false matrix was a damning place to be, a hellish ride. And it's one that we're in the process of concluding and bringing to an end. But as we do this, darkness sees itself as incapable of reuniting with light. Because from darkness's perspective, and it is true, if darkness and it's the same for light, by the way, amalgamates with light, and if light amalgamates with dark, they cease being separate entities. And dark does not want that, because from the perspective of darkness, it's only powerful in its rejection of the light. It's only powerful in separation, because that's the truth. That's what keeps darkness dark.
And darkness is attempting to usurp or to draw in all the power of light. That's its plan. So that it becomes the only thing that there is. And then light becomes a quivering servant of darkness. But do you see how, do you see how light has very often posed in exactly the same way? Do you see how light also wants to demean darkness, judge darkness, punish darkness? <clears throat> and when that happens, light makes itself dark. So darkness sits in a place where it doesn't like to be detected and it won't overtly lash out until now where so much light is flooding the planet and your body and our atmosphere and it feels threatened. And I always knew, you know, I put up a video uh, on my channel about the collapse of the astral and underworld. And I always knew this is inevitable. Darkness is going to really go on to the attack. I didn't think it would be this soon, but it is. And it's this soon because so many front runners and light bearers have embodied so much light. So much light. And that light does what light does. It ripples, ripples, ripples. And it becomes a domino effect and, it and that domino effect becomes a mass awakening upon the planet and of course darkness is trying to protect itself and all that it stands for when light stands against darkness it feeds darkness so don't defend your light stand in truth don't join you don't have to meet that darkness you don't have to defend your light but you do have to stand right now in truth as Truth. There's a very powerful meditative process on my website. It's a trilogy series. So there's three meditations to it. It's called the Stability Series. And it's all about learning to really anchor in that stability of truth. It's teaching the body how to create a passageway of truth. There's a course on my website called The New Human. It does exactly the same thing. The New Human teaches you how to really stabilize into that beacon of consciousness that you are. But that's what you came to this life to be and what you came here to do. Enough of this cyclical up and down, enough of the seesaw, teeter totter. I know, I just, I love the word. You Americans call a seesaw what we call a seesaw in South Africa. You call it a teeter totter. I just think it's the sweetest name ever. Uh, but whatever you call it, right, this up and down, the cyclical backwards and forwards between darkness and light, because that's what we've been doing. Duality has been playing ping pong, seesaw, whatever you want to call it. Few thousand years of darkness, few thousand years of light, dark light, dark light. Eventually we get exhausted and we come to the place that we're at now and we say enough just enough already we're too exhausted to keep playing this game there is only one way that we get out of the game and that is through unification and merging and totality and wholeness and light and darkness by the way always mimics light so what it says is yeah so we're going to merge ai huh great great plan ai and darkness also so they're they're always copying they're always mimicking what light wants to do Nonetheless, the totality of light and dark, which is truth, has issued an invitation to humanity and darkness panicked in the presence of that invitation because so many beings of light heard it and felt it and responded to it. The work that we do in my online community every single Friday is exactly that place where totality and truth is embodied now. We're going to get to two very important topics. I'm going to start talking to you about the tools of darkness, but I'm also going to talk to you about something so important, and that is that light has a purpose and a role. And so many beings of light have been afraid of their power. So many beings of light have been taught to repress their power, not show it, don't bring it out in public. The witch hunts and all of that stuff left this imprint in the collective mind and a core wound in the collective heart of beings of light and consciousness. These star seeds all walk around and these light workers all walk around with the same wound. And that is, I cannot become visible because if I'm visible and I really stand in my power, I will be a target and I will be taken down and I will be attacked. And the truth is, you will be. But please listen to this. You won't feel it. 
you won't feel it. It will become deflected off you. Not only will it become deflected off you, you will stand in the legion of light, never alone, never alone. But you must stand in the stabilized truth of your own higher presence and higher consciousness now. A lot of you guys ask me, how do I do that? Join my online community, follow the work on my website. It's all, all, all available to you. Do you know one of the attacks that I recently received? In fact, it was over the course of about five days from numerous places. One of the many attacks that I've recently been through is people saying, how dare you, Kerry? How dare you want to make a living? How dare you? Hmm? How dare you charge for your work? See, when darkness attacks, it's always irrational. Don't try to be rational with the irrational. Don't try to be logical with the illogical. Don't try to be sane with the insane because it's like arguing with a drunk man. It's simply not going to permeate and penetrate because they're beyond logic. Have you seen that? When darkness attacks, it is so unreasonable. It is so illogical. You know that it's untrue. Nobody needs to defend the fact that I, a mother of three children with a husband who gave up his career to enable me to sit here on this chair to talk to you, because he believed in my purpose so much and he backed me up so much. No one needs to defend the fact that I need to feed these people. And it's okay for me to want a roof over my head. I'm allowed to have a house. More than that, a home. More than that, privacy, sanctuary, everything. The same thing as everybody else, right? To those of you who knew quite recently of how very deeply I've been attacked and sent me donations to support me, I'm incredibly grateful to all of you. Thank you. If you're inclined to do that, then there's a donate button on my website or in the video description box here on YouTube. And please, that's only if you feel called in your heart to do it. Only send from your heart, nothing else. So there's so many people that say, no, 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 I don't want to stand as light in my light, in the power of my light, because I'm going to get attacked. And what I'm saying to you is, yes, you will get attacked. And the more light you stand in, the more the light. Okay, listen to this. Light paves the path ahead of you. That's the nature of light. Remember, light is expansive. So what happens is light rushes ahead of you and it clears the path that you're walking before you even walk it. Does that mean you won't face the darkness? No, you're gonna. You're gonna. But you've got to trust your light. Those of you in my online community, you've heard these words a thousand times. Trust your light. But there are so many people right now walking with one foot in each world. In other words, they're beings of light, but they're very afraid of being a being of light. So they still maintain the division, the judgment, the separation consciousness so that they can stay in duality a little bit more because they feel that if they've still got darkness within them, obviously this is all at a subconscious level. They feel if they've still got a little bit of darkness in them, they're not going to be attacked as fervently. The truth is that's going to become self-destructive behavior because darkness will always destroy itself. It's designed to do that. It implodes. Do you see? Light does not have to. This is not a war between light and dark. Light does not have to take darkness down. The nature of darkness is that it will unravel. It will collapse in its own density. Under the weight of its own density, darkness will always become its own undoing. But when you trust your light which is another way of saying, trust your truth, trust the totality that you are. You'll listen to this conversation and understand that in many places I use the words light and truth interchangeably, but obviously each time I speak of light, I'm talking about the truth of light, which is the totality. When you do that, when you stand in that truth, the path before you is lit and you are shielded. And there are so many light bearers who are shrinking from that role right now. And I'm telling you, you're safe. I'm telling you, no matter what you go through, if you stand in light, you are safe. Now, let's talk about the tools of darkness. Hmm? Darkness is very judgmental. Whoa, it's quick to condemn. Whoa, it's quick to judge. When you hear people talking about judgment and they're judging you, they're judging the food you eat. They're judging your spiritual practice. 
They're judging anything about you. When people are in judgment, even if they pose as light, what are they? They are agents of darkness. They are servants of darkness, very often unknowing, but that's okay. So judgment is a very big tool of darkness. And then that judgment will be used to condemn you. Remember the plan that I spoke about earlier to take you down so that your light can be given over to darkness. So that's why it always stands in judgment because it needs light to give up its own light voluntarily. Now I need this to really sink in because what I've just said is huge. Because the truth is darkness can't come to you and say, okay, give me your light. Even if it does, you're going to go, no. And it defies cosmic law. It defies universal law. The only thing that can actually, actually, actually happen is light can give its power away in the presence of judgment, in the presence of fear, in the presence of darkness. Light can volunteer its power away from itself and say, oh, no, 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 no. This is too scary for me. I'll be a good boy. I'll be a good girl. I'll behave myself. I'll be small again. And so light disempowers itself. So the tools darkness uses is to get light to cut itself off at the knees. So blame is a very, very big tool of darkness. Shame is a very, very big tool of darkness. With that shame and blame and the judgment, darkness then acts in a manner that is very often treacherous, it betrays. So it will very often act as an ally because remember that darkness is manipulative. So it will very often act as an ally of light. It can, it can be a lover. It can be family members sometimes who do this. And sometimes it's not the individual. Guys, please remember this. A lot of the time, most of the time, you're dealing with entities that are operating human bodies and operating through human bodies. Now, when I say this, do you know that people call me fear-mongering? And that's okay. I'm really fine. I, I really understand. People are always going to project their own fear at the first and biggest light that they see. So I really understand that this is going to happen. But I don't want you to hold these kinds of misunderstandings. A lot of the time when you're dealing with a human being who's projecting this darkness at you, it's their entities that are doing the work. Most of the time, they don't even know why they're behaving as they are. So more of those tools of darkness, treachery and betrayal, because those things scar light so deeply. And in the presence of treachery and betrayal, what happens to our energy? We drop, we drop because that is one of the illusions of our wounds. It's one of the deepest core wounds that we have is the idea that somewhere along the line, we've been cast out of God, pushed away from God. So we hold this core wound within us of treachery and betrayal by the being we love the most and come from, which is God itself. So this is all illusory stuff, but the core wound sits there. So when we experience betrayal and treachery from other human beings, it cuts particularly, particularly deep. Another tool of darkness is to lash out and particularly to lash out in a group so that you feel intimidated. And then we've got punishment. Punishment is a big tool of darkness. Because, and this is what makes light cower. Light doesn't want to be punished. It doesn't want to be wronged. It always wants to be the good boy or the good girl. And is very protective of how it's seen. Light doesn't want to be seen in a bad way. When you understand that truth is truth. It doesn't matter how many illusions view truth from how many different angles. That is all to do with the illusion. Truth is unwaverable. And it just is. There are many people who talk about my truth. They say, my truth is this. Yes, but my truth is that. Ah, but there is only one truth. There is only one universal truth. When you're looking from the perspective of light or dark that stands in separateness and separation, you can absolutely, of course, you're going to get it wrong. Of course, because you're looking through a corrupted lens at something that is bigger than you. You can't perceive something that is bigger than you, especially not from a corrupted lens. So I want you to know that no matter what goes on right now, you're safe. You're more than safe. Because every time a poison arrow comes to you, light deflects the arrow. We're so used to, to doing everything ourselves, standing on our own, not being loved, not being supported, having no one in our corner. 
So trust your light is one of the most powerful and impressive endeavors that any being of consciousness can undertake. But undertake that endeavor. Watch all the July calls. For those of you in my online community or those of you that want to join, go watch all of the July calls because we dealt with the theme of trust your light. In August, we dealt with the theme of authenticity and that's where the attack started. The attacks came in in August because as we get really into the core essence of the true self, darkness arrives and says, oh no, you don't. We can't have that kind of power on the planet. We can't have that kind of light just showing up here on planet Earth. We've got to take you down. You're jeopardizing our work. Authenticity is one of the most powerful things that you can be in the world right now. You don't do authenticity. You can only be authentic. Be authenticity. We're evolving. And as we evolve and as we journey, we journey together. And we find each other right here as we always agreed to do on this pathway back home, back to the totality that we come from, because that's what home is. Home is the light and dark amalgamated into the oneness, because that's our origin. Home is a state of being. It's not a place. It's never been a place. I'm going to leave you with this video up over here. This is Timeline Wars. It's going to help you to understand a little bit more about what's going on from my heart all the way into yours. Hope you feel it.